um, we will answer any questions that you have at the end of it. And my team will be in the chat supporting any questions you might have as well. All righty. So without further ado, I'm actually going to save my introduction for the next slide. So I'm going to let my team go ahead and introduce themselves. But we do have Michael, who is our Associate Director of Marketing in the School of Professional Studies with us tonight. And he'll be helping uh, with the tech and the producing side of things tonight. Um, but with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Alyssa, who is our lead counselor this summer, to introduce herself really quick. All right. Good evening, everybody. My name is Alyssa, and I'm going to be the lead counselor for this summer. I've um, been with Camps on Campus for quite some years now. I was a counselor in training, then I was a counselor, and now I'm going to be the lead counselor. And I'm an upcoming junior at Harry University. Thanks, Alyssa. And we will turn it over to Veronica, who is our associate director for the summer, and she will be supervising our 49er minor camps and our Niner Academy camps. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Um, my name is Veronica Spikes. I'll be associate director, like she said, for minor camps and um, Niner Academy. I'm a middle school teacher, and I'm excited to get started this summer and meet your kiddos and build some relationships and hopefully some lasting memories. Awesome. Thanks. And Carlos is joining us. He is our other associate director, and he will be over our cool school and our coding camps this summer. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm Carlos McCray, um, Associate Director, first year with the camp. I'm very excited. Um, I'm currently a physical education teacher at elementary school, so I love kids. That's my passion, so I cannot wait to start camp with your kids and, like Veronica said, make some lasting memories. Awesome. Thanks, team. So I'll go ahead and introduce myself. I'm going to get the Michael Jackson going again. So I thought it'd be nice to kind of show you guys my background with camps while I'm doing my introduction. Camp has been a part of my life almost my entire life. Um, it's something very, 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 very near and dear to me. And so camp has been a super transformative experience. I have some photos on here. I've done wilderness camps. I've done um, academic camps, sports camps, faith-based camps you name it. Um, I've been a camper, but I've also been on counseling staff and leadership staff for various camps throughout my life. But camp has been a super transformative and like learning opportunity for me. And so um, I thought it'd be nice to show you guys some, you know, my background with camps as a whole. But my background with camps on campus here at UNC Charlotte actually started during my undergrad when I was studying to become a teacher. And so um, during my summers off from school, I would work as a counselor. And so each summer I just kept coming back and back and I loved it so much. This will be my eighth summer with the program. So again, super near and dear to my heart. Um, before I took on the position full time, um, I actually worked in CMS as a first grade teacher. And so I served on the leadership team and the full time position, you know, kind of opened up. And so here I am, I'm super excited to be with camps and be here at UNC Charlotte, my alma mater, and um, hopefully camp, not only camp in general, but UNC Charlotte camps on campus can provide that transformative experience for your child, similar to my background with camps. So without further ado, our agenda tonight, here's kind of an overview of how we'll spend the next hour and hopefully I can get it under an hour, we'll see. But um, we are gonna be talking about our staff, our program, kind of what makes us unique. I will be talking about our new camp app. I know I have probably a mix of new parents and returning parents. And so our new parents and returning parents alike will want to be hearing that piece in particular. Um, it'll be crucial for parent communication this summer. I'll be going over a sample day at camp, what the drop-off and pickup procedure looks like, all things preparation for camp, and just answering any questions you might have. So we're gonna go ahead and get into that now. Camps on Campus is a program that's been around for a really long time. This will actually be our 24th season of Camps on Campus. But we started our youth program initiative about two years ago now. And so we've just been kind of growing, growing and expanding. And so I kind of wanted to include what those programs look like and, and how we're shaping youth programs here at Charlotte. So 
Um, Camps on Campus is accompanied by various youth workshops. It's accompanied by our Institute of Reading Development Partnership. And then our Niner Academy has several offerings for our high school students, including SAT prep, ACT prep, um, our online courses. So just wanted to kind of give you a visual of the other programs we offer in addition to Camps on Campus during the year. So if you want to learn more about what we do outside of the summer, then check us out at youth.charlotte.edu. So youth programs lives within the School of Professional Studies here at UNC Charlotte. And so I kind of wanted to give you an overview of what teams are supporting camps on campus within the School of Professional Studies. So the primary positions and folks that will be supporting camps on campus are gonna be our enrollment and student service team. They're the friendly, warm voices that you hear when you guys are calling in. So Isabella is our enrollment manager and Victoria and Emily are our folks that are gonna be on the phone, supporting with your accounts, payments, registration, all things student services. So they not only support camps on campus, but they support our entire um, department, our online academic credit, our professional credit, summer term they support. So they are fantastic resources and those are the folks that are gonna be on those phone lines when you guys are calling in for support. Now we turn over to our Camps on Campus team. I am a one woman show during the year. So I'm the youth program manager and I'm the director of Camps on Campus. But during the summer months, I get to bring on an amazing staff that helps me get this program off the ground and it, you know, they make it what it is. So that's Veronica, Carlos and Alyssa who you met just a moment ago, but we also have 25 camp counselors that are college age students and we also have around 30 instructors, which are a mix of UNC Charlotte faculty and K-12 licensed teachers in the community. We also have 10 CIT. So those are our counselors in training, our high school volunteers, and they're looking to get extra service hours for those college resumes. So a little bit about who we are as a program. As I mentioned, Camps on Campus, this will be our 24th season. So Next year is our 25th anniversary, or a big milestone year for us. But our main thing that sets us apart is our goal and our focus on academic enrichment for rising first through 12th graders. So we have a variety of disciplines such as STEM, arts, coding, um, service learning, you name it. We really try to have a, a diverse offering. Um, I think some other things that really make us unique is our structure, Again, making learning fun, we like to call it edutainment. That's probably what sets us apart um, from your standard recreational camp. And of course, we value safety, not only for our campers, also for our staff, everyone involved. Safety is a top priority, and I'm definitely going to be going into details about that here in a moment. But we also are looking just to provide that college exposure and what it's like to be a 49er for the week. So that's a little bit about who we are, and I'm going to kind of get into the nitty gritty of that. So I mentioned our six pillars of Camps on Campus, and so the first one I'll cover is safety. We do have all of our staff complete mandatory background checks every year, and so that's part of the youth protection training and our youth protection minors on campus policy here at UNC Charlotte. Um, some of the field trips will have off-site visit and field trip opportunities. Not all of them do, but, but some of them will. And so with those, we have certified and licensed van drivers. And we also provide booster seats for kids that are eight and under. So those are some safety measures we have for any off-site visits. Um, we also have police and public safety. They come out and train our counselors on ALICE training, that active shooter training. Um, you know, we, we hate to talk about those type of things, but of course we want to make sure we're prepared no matter what the circumstance may arise. So we're doing that type of training. We're doing basic first aid. Um, and so we have a lot of different resources here on campus that we tap into to make sure we have a comprehensive safety plan. We also are abiding by our rule of three, just making sure that our child to adult ratios are sticking to that rule of three. And again, all of this is in line with the minors on campus policy here at UNC Charlotte. Another layer of safety is we issue a dash placard for secure pickup. 
You can only get the DASH placard if you are an enrolled family through our camp app. Um, so those are unique and we change those out each year. So it's not like someone from previous years could you know, duplicate or use that placard. We also have the emergency alert system. Um, it's kind of a pop-up screen in any of the classrooms should there be an emergency on campus. That kind of is sent out anywhere on campus, but you can also sign up for the emergency alert text. And I'll talk about that here in a bit. We have our Niner character promise in place, which is our you know, behavior code of conduct for our campers. And I find that that really fosters kind of a, a sense of belonging and a, and a sense of that golden rule of how we're gonna treat one another and how we're going to enhance the camp experience for the week. We are a nut-free program. So, you know, there's a lot of different allergies these days. And so we kind of avoid that altogether with our nut-free policy. And we also have two-way radios that has a special button to call police. So our two-way radio, sometimes the phone service is spotty in different buildings, which is why we did invest in the two-way radios. Um, so we can get in touch with each other no matter what. We have the feature to call the police in the event of an emergency, and we have an added GPS tracking feature. So now um, at any given moment when our staff are out with the radios, we can actually track and see where they are on campus or off campus. So talking a little bit more about friendships and inclusion, we do really focus on character development. Um, our instructors incorporate different methods into the classroom to do that. Uh, maybe it, you know, small work um, or small group work, modeling appropriate behavior. And so our staff are trained on developing positive qualities and positive choices. And that kind of goes along with our Niner character promise. And again, going back to that sense of belonging for everyone that's coming to the camp with us for the week. So not only do we do that, but we also, when we are recruiting our team, we are looking for folks that represent the campers that we serve. So we keep that in mind in our recruiting and our hiring process as well. And you know, folks that are able to serve in that mentor role. So edutainment, a word that we like to use here at Camps on Campus. All of our teachers are licensed teachers or they're a subject matter expert or here UNC Charlotte faculty. So we make sure to have that in place whenever we're recruiting and hiring our instructors. Um, as far as the interdisciplinary and cross-curricular content, we do have quite the range of offerings, but we also understand that our camps are grouped with quite a range of grade levels and abilities. So we also look to differentiate within those camp settings in addition to our diverse offerings. We really try to make things hand-on, experiential. We like to bring guest speakers. Again, I mentioned some off-site visits. We also like to visit different places on campus. So we may visit the gardens, um, you know, for our nature camps or for our service camps, they serve at the, you know, pantry, you know, on campus, the Niner Jamil Pantry. Sorry, I was blanking on the name of that. But we try to leverage all of the resources on campus and even our partnerships in the community. We also do a learning need intake at the time of registration. So if I'll talk a little bit more about accommodations in a bit, but if there are specific needs that your child needs in order to be successful for the week, then I'm, I'm always happy to have conversations with folks and, and make sure that we understand what your child needs to be successful, uh, what those triggers might be, what supports can be in place. So we are happy to, you know, talk to you personally, or if you feel like you want to just add general tips and tricks in your camper profile, feel free to do that as well. So talking a little bit about college connection, I mentioned some on-campus opportunities. We have a lot of faculty and staff that are engaging with our programs. Um, like I said, many of them are leading the programs themselves or they come in and offer their time to speak about their programs, um, what they're doing at Charlotte and what resources they have to just extend that learning experience. We also have a lot of UNC Charlotte students that are our counselors. We have counselors from various colleges, but many of them are from UNC Charlotte and so, 
again, just kind of engaging and getting exposed to that college atmosphere and the college community itself here at Charlotte. And in addition to that, we also have a few pieces in place for our Niner Academy camps to provide that authentic collegiate feel. We have our teen lounge. So our Niner Academy has a separate drop off and pickup area so they can kind of feel special and like they have their own area. Um, and they also have special dining privileges, which are some things that I'll talk about here in a bit as well. So structure, we find that kids thrive in a structured environment. So we do have pre-planned agendas that our parents get access to two weeks before the start date of the camp. Um, so that June date for the first week of camp, June 10th, that's coming up pretty soon. So you guys will be getting access to your agendas here at the end of the month. We do have classroom management in place and a camp-wide behavior management system. We also try to provide consistent communication with our parents and with our staff and students. Um, we have our Niner Character Promise that we go over every morning just to make sure that we are communicating what we expect and so that you know the campers can ask questions about what support they might need there. We have a carpool procedure and we also have a lunch procedure. So any transition throughout the day is certainly well planned. Again, we find that kids thrive in a structured environment. So piggybacking off that, we're gonna talk more about parent communication. So as I mentioned, the camp app, I'll be talking about that here in a moment, but that's where you're going to have access to the agenda, maps, blog, dash placard, all of the things. Um, and so we're really hoping that that new app this year is gonna streamline communication for our parents. We do send email reminders about payment deadlines. If you decided to go on a payment plan, we have our Google Doc blog. So our instructors do a quick blog at the end of each day to kind of tell you guys about what they learned beyond the agenda, which is nice. Um, you know, every single time when the kids get in the car, right? And you're like, what'd you learn today? And they're like, nothing, we didn't do anything. Well, you can go back and refer to the blog and maybe um, that can spark some conversations at the dinner table or in the car with them that night. So I talked a little bit about emergency notifications. If you would like to sign up for Niner Alerts, you can text UNC Charlotte Alerts to this number right here and that'll get you enrolled in those Niner Alerts. We do provide notes home when necessary typically isn't urgent. Maybe if you accidentally forgot to, you know, you packed peanut butter and jelly and you forgot we were in a free camp, we may send notes home for that. Or um, maybe we noticed your child's behavior was different from the past days. Those are the type of things we would send notes home for just to kind of notify you or keep you in the loop on things. And in addition to that, we also send pre-camp emails out. You will get a 12-day out email and a four-day out email. The 12 day email, um, is, it's honestly talking a lot about the app and just how to prepare for camp. And the four day one is a reminder to go in and check your online documents, making sure that you're printing out your dash placker and that you have review, reviewed the agenda and you know necessary documents. So, okay, what we've all been waiting for, the app. <laughs> so we're super, super excited to have this app. If you've been with us in the past, you know that we've done Google Drive links and, you know, we've sent emails with the links. So um, instead of kind of having to dig through your email and, and that type of thing or dig through Google Drive, it'll be all right there at the tip of your fingers with the app. So it is going to be replacing Google Drive. We will not have Google Drive parent folders um, like we have in the past. So you will need to download the app in order to access those important documents and Everything that you need for the app is going to be located on our website. Here is the link down here. And I believe Alyssa will drop in the chat here in a moment a little bit about that. But it's five easy steps to download and add that information as a parent. And if you have any questions about that, just let us know. I do wanna show a few screen grabs of the app so you guys can kind of see what it is exactly that you are signing up for. So there are several tabs at the bottom of the screen for the app. So the first one is the news section. So 
Um, we have an SAT workshop coming up. So we, we posted that in the news. It's kind of just announcements, fun things that we want to share with you. We won't be blowing you guys up, I promise. Um, it's mostly just for reminders and just fun, exciting things that we want to share, announcements, things like that. If you want to check out our Facebook page, um, it also highlights that here on this screenshot. But clicking over to events, it lays all of the different events out in the calendar. Um, during the summer, you can see our fun theme Fridays. Every Friday, the whole staff dresses up with a fun theme. So let's say um, it's Hawaiian Friday. We will put that event in the calendar for you guys so you can see if, you're, if your kids want to participate and dress up with us. So that would be what the events tab is. We also have our photo tab. So once you click down here in the photos, oh, sorry, there we go. Once you click down here in the photos, you can see all the different weeks that you are enrolled for, and you should be able to click into your child's specific camp. So you'll only have access to just your child's camp. You will not have to go through and dig through a bunch of folders, um, you know, that your campus, your child isn't enrolled into. So let's see, that registration code is going to be 9201. Alyssa, would you mind dropping that in the chat just so they have it? Thank you. You're awesome. And lastly, um, on this slide, you have the contacts tab. So as I mentioned, those awesome people that are on the phones, that is, here's their email information and our phone number there. And then our Camps on Campus staff, their phone line and email as well. So Quick overview there. Now I do want to point out a few things about the more tab. There's a few links in here that I really want to highlight for you guys. And thanks for all the love about the app. I'm glad y'all are just as excited as I am because this is like the game changer, the best thing that's ever happened to me. So I'm glad that you guys are just as excited. Um, so yeah, what I want to highlight about the more tab is the documents page. So once you tap on more My Documents and you're in your week of camp, you can click into your child's week of camp. On my screenshot, it has all the weeks, um, but on yours, it should only have the weeks that you are enrolled for or the camps that you're enrolled for. But once you, once you click into the camp, you can see all of the documents pop up here and you just tap into whichever document that you'd like to see. So you can see that Dash Placard's here. We have a carpool tutorial. Um, just all the things that you need to have. The blog that I mentioned is all going to be in the Documents tab. All right, so my personal favorite feature about the app is the Locations feature. So if you're in More, you tap Locations, you can tap the building or the parking deck that you would like to drive to or which, whichever place that you're going. You can tap Get Directions and it will automatically pull up your GPS route. So if you have multiple kids, will they have individual folders? Yes, they will have a folder unique for each camp. Now, if your kids are enrolled in the same camp, it's just one folder, the same documents. But if they are enrolled in different camps, then you will have access to the different camps. Good question. So yes, the GPS is my favorite, you know, especially for folks that aren't used to our campus. It's it is a tough one to navigate at times, so hopefully that will minimize anybody getting lost, but our GPS feature is awesome, and I definitely encourage you to take advantage of that. So in addition to locations and the documents, we have our early pickup form. I know sometimes um, kiddos have appointments or different things they need to get to, and y'all need to pick them up early. So if you tap the early pickout form and fill out this Brief Google form that will notify us that you are coming to pick your child up early and we will have them ready to go at whatever time that you have requested. So that is where you can locate that. And then the last thing that I'll highlight under the more tab is our camp staff. So if you'd like to kind of read about the camp counselors and their bios, you can click that link and it'll take you to the page to check out who our team is. All right, so in addition to the app, we do have the My Media Center. And so this is how you can access your documents on a desktop. This would be a great way to print your dash placard or if you see some really cute photos of your kiddo that you wanna print off, this is how you would access the Media Center um, via a desktop. 
I know, especially with the dash placard, us requiring you guys to print and bring those every day, um, it may be hard to print that off from your phone. So you can do that in the media center. And Alyssa, drop that chat, uh, the link in the chat there for you. And those of you that are watching the recording, I've got the link right here on the screen. So you'll be able to see two things. From this screen grab, you're able to see the photo folders. And I can tell that this is the photo folders because in the upper right-hand corner is the toggle to switch to the, the view document side. So if I were to tap the view documents, then it would toggle me to um, the, the screen grab where you can see all the different documents and print off the dash placard, for example. All righty, I'm hopping in the chat. Is team, is there anything that I have not answered yet that I need to, or can I keep rolling? Let's see, good to go? Perfect, thanks. So what your day looks like at camp, we start off at the science building or McHenry building, and I'm gonna talk about the pick up and drop off here in just a second. Um, so you'll start at either one of those buildings, most likely the science building, that's our main location. Um, and so that's actually lot 16. It's the building um, adjacent to the science building. So our drop off is from 7.30 to 8.40. At 8.40 is when our counselors are circling up and doing those roster checks. So. Once we complete our roster checks and everyone is checked in, we are leaving promptly at 845 to take the, kid, the kids to their assigned classroom. So if you are arriving past 845, you will want to park and walk your child to the classroom. And the carpool tutorial goes over the process on what that looks like, you know, and sometimes you might have an appointment or need to arrive late anyways. Um, so that's what that process will look like. Our learning time is from nine to noon-ish. Our um, lunchtime varies. You will need to check out your agenda to see when your child's lunch is, um, but it'd be nine until lunch. We would have our lunch time, and then we would have the second half of our learning from one to four. Our campers are walking back with their counselors to either the science building or McInerney to the pickup location, and our Pickup time starts at 4.15 and concludes at 5.30. You don't need your placard in the morning, um, but you will need it in the afternoon in order to expedite the checkout process. So um, I always just say bring it for both. Just leave it in your car once you've printed it out, but um, you will need the dash placard for the afternoon. I did make a note down here that if you did not purchase a meal plan or that you're packing lunch and sending that daily with your child, there is still time to add a meal plan. If you're interested in that, you can call our student service team. Um, but unfortunately, you cannot just send your child with money daily. So you would either need to prepay for, pre for a meal plan, or you would need to pack and send lunch. All of our meal plans with the dining hall is done in advance. Um, if you are faculty or staff on campus and you have your own Meal swipes, feel free to utilize that on your own, but for the most part, you will need to do the meal plan in advance instead of sending your child with money every day. And I'll go into lunch a little bit more. Okay, so drop up and pick up. I know this is a, a hot topic. So Science Building is our main location. You can see Science Building right here. Hopefully you guys can see my cursor. Can you? Or no? You can? Okay, good. So this is Science Building, and we are in lot 16. That's going to be our pickup lot. So I've kind of highlighted the route. Let's say you're coming from Mary Alexander Road. You would drive through this loop here and up to this stop sign. And the kids are going to be playing and doing recreational activities, four square, things like that, in this field here. So just kind of giving you a visual of what the pickup route looks like from the aerial view. If it's raining or super, super hot, then we do have the kids inside the science building um, and our carpool staff will still be curbside calling names and the kids will come out of the building into the car. So again, please check out the carpool tutorial video. It goes through all the nitty gritty of that, but I did want to at least highlight what the route look kind of looks like here and provide that address. So. Hey, Taylor, somebody had a question. Mm -hmm. about 
the meal plan? They asked who they should call about the meal plan. 704-687-8900. And I'll put that in the chat right now. That is our main line. 704-687-8900 is the number you can call to add a meal plan. Any other questions that I'm missing? I can go back and, and check some here in a bit. Thanks, Alyssa, for letting me know. So our cool school, our 49er minor, and our coding camps, this is going to be the drop-off and pick-up location. As I mentioned earlier, our Niner Academy, our high school camps, have their own separate teen lounge. Again, making them feel special in, in the college environment. So our coding spans fourth through ninth grade. The ninth graders may be in coding one week. They may be in Niner Academy ninth through 12 another week. So any of my parents that have ninth graders, let me know if you have questions. But if they are in a coding camp, they will be at our main location. If they're in a Niner Academy camp, then they will be at the Niner Academy drop-off and pick-up location. So here is McHenry, that high school drop-off and pick-up location for 9th or 12th. Um, you can come up Craver Road here. That is our main road. And lot 16A, right next to the greenhouse here, is the lot that we will be in for that pickup process. And here is the building, should there be, you know, rain, extreme heat, things like that. And actually, every day our high schoolers choose to be inside. You know how high schoolers are. So that is where they're going to be, and that's where the teen lounge is located. You can tell that it's right across from the science building, our main location. So if you have siblings, you want to drop the whole crew off at science building, you have some high schoolers, and you would want them to walk across the street, feel free to do that. And here's the address here. Any questions coming up about pickup that we need help with? Where do we find the placard? Placard is going to be in the camp app. So it won't be in your online portal. It'll be in the camp app. And just let us know if you're having any issues with that. Is there snack time in addition to lunch? Yes, we do have snack time. Typically, we have a mid-morning snack and a mid-afternoon kind of snack break. So definitely pack some snacks. All right. Can we walk to drop off or pick up if we work on campus? Absolutely. You definitely do that. And we'll be having staff located on the sidewalk. That'll help with any walk-up checkout. And we go over that in the carpool tutorial as well. So in the camp app, if you tap more, my documents, and then you select your child's camp for whatever week it is, you will find the placard there. So I'm going to keep rolling in the interest of time. Hopefully my team will be able to answer any more questions that are coming up, but if not, I will jump back in here in a moment and answer those for you guys. So talking a little bit more about Niner Academy, I mentioned siblings. Again, you'll want to You'll want to um, do drop off and pick up at our main location at Science Building, and they can walk across the street if you feel comfortable with that. If you do not feel comfortable with your child walking across the street, you're more than welcome to go to both locations. Um, and sometimes what we've had parents do is we have had their Niner Academy student check out from their camp and walk to join their siblings at the Science Building. So that is also an option. It really depends on what you're comfortable with. If you want to go to both, by all means, you're welcome to do so. But for convenience, if you don't mind your child walking across the street, then you're welcome to do that. So we know we have some Diner Academy drivers. And so if you are planning for your child to drive to campus, more than likely you will want them to park in the student union deck or East Deck 1. And again, carpool tutorial, it goes into all the nitty gritty, you guys. So definitely check it out. Um, if your camper is arriving after 840, then they will not have to report to McHenry. They can go, just go straight to the classroom. They can park, walk right to the classroom, and skip that altogether. So um, if you need to update any permissions for authorized adults, let's say, um, you know, in the event of an emergency, you're going to have their uncle or aunt pick them up. 
then you can definitely add those authorized adults to their profile. And you can do so just by calling in and letting us know that you would like different adults on their, on their profile. One other thing that I'll mention, I did make a note here. If you are not a UNC Charlotte faculty, staff, or student, you will not have access to um, purchase like a week long pass, you will have to use visitor parking. So if you do have a child, um, you know, your faculty and staff and you wanna add your child's car or they're taking your car, then you can add them to your, um, your account for parking. But if you are a visitor and non-Charlotte affiliated, then you will have to utilize the visitor parking. And so you can check that out with the link there. And I think Alyssa will drop that in for me here in just a moment for the visitor parking. So you will want to prepare them um, to pay with a credit card for the visitor parking. I don't believe they take cash anymore. I believe it is all credit cards. So visitor parking, if you are not UNC Charlotte faculty or staff. All righty, so a little bit about our late policy. The latest available pickup is gonna be 5.30. Um, after 5.35, yeah. there will be an additional supervision charge. So. Um, again, if it's the first time that it's happened, we definitely give folks some grace. Things happen, right? We can't control everything. Yeah. Um, sorry, is there a question? No, okay. Um, yeah, so we can't control everything that happens, right? Um, if, if you're picking up late for the first time, no worries, just call and give us a notice. But um, if, if there's a little bit of a, a continuous struggle to get there by 5.30, then our late policy would be enforced at that time. So here's a quick visual of what our classrooms look like. We have a variety of you know, standard table and chair classrooms. Some of our camps are gonna be taken in various labs. We have performance spaces, computer labs. So here's kind of a visual of what that looks like. So what to wear, pack, bring, all things preparation. Definitely send your kiddo in comfortable clothing. We recommend athletic clothing, athletic shoes, preferably not flip flops. Um, we've had it happen where folks are running around at recess or, or what have you and, and those pop. So tennis shoes are definitely preferred. Uh, refillable water bottle is definitely crucial, uh, preferably labeled. Again, making sure we're packing snacks. We will have snack time, just making sure they're not free. Their lunch bag, if you are choosing to pack their lunch for the week, Backpack, umbrella, rain gear, you never know when it's going to rain here in North Carolina, right? Especially during the summer, those thunderstorms. So making sure we're prepared for inclement weather. We also ask that um, parents are applying sunscreen in the morning before they arrive to camp. Our staff are not permitted to help with sunscreen application. So making sure that either your child's independent to do so or that you apply it beforehand. Any medications, EpiPen, that is going to remain with the child at all times. We do not collect medication and keep them in our office or anything like that. They do stay with, with the child in the event of an emergency. And then just any basic supplies, pen, uh, pencil markers, that's not required. We have all of that here at camp, but sometimes you just have a special pen or a special pencil that you want to bring to camp, and we definitely encourage that. A few parent preparation tips, making sure that you go over the Niner character promise with your child. We will also cover it every Monday, um, but just making sure that you kind of have those conversations starting at home. Watching that carpool tutorial, I know I've mentioned it like 10 times. It really is um, helpful and goes into the nitty gritty. Um, just making sure that you're checking in on those pick up and drop up times when they start and when they wrap up, making sure you bring your dash placard at the end of the day to expedite that process for our carpool staff, bringing any snacks, packing a lunch. Um, if you are not opting to do the meal plan, any um, early pickup is going to be completed by three o'clock. After three o'clock, we're kind of in transition mode. We're kind of wrapping up our day, concluding things. So I just hate for one of you guys to head to the classroom to pick up your child after three o'clock and for the camp to already be tran in transition or not there. So we do ask for any early pickups, just kind of keep that in mind that by three o'clock is when we would 
like that to be completed. For any same day or emergency pickups, you can certainly give us a call or email us. Our information is right here on the slide. And just making sure you've communicated with other designated adults. We do recommend having more than one adult on your approved pickup list. Things happen. Um, so sharing the dash placard and things like that with any backup emergency authorized adults. Making sure you're accessible by phone. Our camp counselors will be calling from various numbers. So I know I'm, I'm guilty of this. If I, I won't pick up a number unless I know it. But during the, the few weeks that you're with us during the summer, just picking up any various phone numbers, it's probably one of our staff or counselors calling. Other than that, just tips for success. If you, know, if you have concerns about your child's week or want to inform us of anything, just keeping an open dialogue there. And then checking those online resources via the CAMP app prior to your visit. You know, sometimes folks are waiting to the last minute and they're frustrated because they're lost somewhere on campus and they, they can't get to their camp on time. So we definitely don't want any frustrations. We want everything to run smoothly your first time coming to camp. So kind of checking all those things out in advance. Those are my top 10 parent preparation tips. All righty, a few reminders I've mentioned about labeling, labeling everything. You guys would not believe the amount of lost and found that we get every summer. A huge, huge tub. Uh, but we show the kids, who's is this, who's is this, who's is this? So label everything that you can. It helps us whenever something does get left behind, make sure it gets back to its rightful owner. Leaving valuables at home. Uh, we know that most kids, especially high schoolers, have phones these days, um, but Leaving tablets, iPads, computers, things like that, they really don't need a camp. We provide any technology that they would need. So if it's a super special keepsake, a fa family heirloom, something, leave it at home. We wouldn't want anything like that to get ruined. Another tip is making sure that the camper is registered under their name and not the parent name. We've had folks be a little bit confused when they're registering. Um, and so they'll put their name in thinking that, you know, they're asking for the parent name instead of the student name. So when the student is coming up to check in on that first day, we don't have them on their rosters. We actually have your name. So usually we can get to the bottom of it, but you guys are able to check that in advance. Then we won't have any confusion during check-in on that first day. I also like to invite parents to install the LiveSafe app on your phone. You can get emergency text alerts there, but my favorite feature on the LiveSafe app is the virtual walk. So especially those of you that are having your kids drive to camp, your high schoolers drive to camp, and you kind of want to follow them on campus, you want to make sure they're getting there okay, that virtual walk-along feature can be found on the LiveSafe app, which is really cool. And then of course- Hey Taylor, yeah. someone had a quick question. They, uh, mm -hmm. they said, although a child carries their EpiPen, is there a medical form that needs to be completed? Not as long as you've documented it on the camper profile. If you have said, my child is allergic to X, Y, and Z, they have an EpiPen, our staff will have access to that information and we do do an EpiPen training. Hopefully that answers that question. Awesome, thank you for that. All right, we are wrapping it up, getting to the end here. I promise I'll take some questions, but I just wanna do a, a Quick call out for any accommodations. If your child has an IEP plan or a 504 plan at school, and there's information on that plan that you'd like to share with us, you think it would be helpful to make their week successful, you can contact us at our email um, and request that accommodation or request that we add something to the camper profile if you forgot to do it initially. We just wanna make sure that every child in our program has the tool for success. And we want to know how to best support your kids. So any concerns about accommodations, just reach out and let us know. Some of our policies to remember. So our payment deadlines, payments are due 14 days before the start of the camp. So if you did opt to do a payment plan, let's say you are signed up for week one starting on June 10th, that payment is coming up here at the end of May and it will not auto draft out of your account. You will have to make a manual payment. So just making sure you stay on top of those payment um, deadlines. Unfortunately, we, we've had it in the past where 
folks have gotten confused, missed the deadline, and we had to cancel their enrollment and we offered their seat to someone on the wait list. So we definitely don't want that to happen, especially if it's just a, you know, a common error, staying on top of those payment deadlines if you're on a payment plan. Um, I mentioned our Niner character promise, nut free, no valuables, our technology policy. Those can all be found on our FAQ page. So just reading those if you feel like you need a little more information on, on these specific policies. Okay, so some FAQs that I'm going to cover before I take your questions here in the chat. I work on campus. Can I drop my camper off in the classroom early? You can take your child straight to the classroom and skip the, um, the drop off and, and pick up if you would like to. Um, you just have to make sure that there is another person present because three. So if you're dropping off early and only the instructor is present, then you would have to wait for another camper or the camp to arrive in order to leave them there. You cannot just leave your camper with the instructor one-on-one -on -one because of our rule of three. So just keep that in mind. If you want to learn a little bit more about how to complete your payments online with your account, then our link is right here under our FAQ. There's a whole section about login, uh, payment solutions, things like that. It's pretty helpful. Um, how long do I have to enroll in a waitlisted camp? Once you um, are notified that a seat is available in a waitlisted camp, there is a 24 hour window to enroll. And if that 24 hours passes, then the seat will be offered to the next person on the wait list. So just kind of keeping that in mind, especially for anyone that is waiting on a specific camp in particular, um, making sure you're watching those emails, notifications. So I mentioned just a moment ago that payments are due 14 days before the start of the camp. So keeping that in mind, if you want to reach your child's instructor directly, our instructor email addresses will be listed in the agendas within the app. Um, so you can find their emails there and contact them directly. Now, there are gonna be times when you forget your dash placard. That is all right. We do ask for the dash placard because it does expedite the line. Um, and, and again, I'll go ahead and mention week one, we have a pretty fresh team. So we'll definitely be doing some training and some onboarding during that week with the carpool process. So you can expect delays on that first week, but we hope to get everything like a well-oiled machine by week two. Um, if you do forget your dash placard, please just be prepared to show your driver's license. And so we can look to make sure that you are authorized to pick up the child that you're there for. So finding your parent documents, again, all right there in the app for you. I know Alyssa dropped that link in the chat earlier for you to reference, but for those that are watching the recording, the um, URL is listed right there. Other than that, if you forgot to add something about your child, call us, email us. We can update any missing information, whether it's IEP information, you know, you want to add another authorized adult to their profile, you want to add a meal plan. If you need to update or add anything, please just let us know. We are happy to do that. Okay, um, I'm also going to do a quick plug for our Facebook. You can follow us on Facebook if you like to see what we're up to. We do post um, the kiddos and our staff and just some fun things on there for our online community. So that is our handle for Facebook. And that concludes our session tonight. I really, really thank each of you guys for being here and spending your evening with me. And thank you so much for choosing Camps on Campus. We're so excited to get the summer started. We have been planning uh, for the whole past year for this summer. So we just can't wait. And we hope you guys are excited as we are. So I will be taking any questions that were not answered earlier and happy to chat. Anything in the chat team? Yeah, somebody was asking about adding any information to their mm -hmm. camper profile, and they asked who should they contact to make sure it's correct. Yes, so you can contact the CE registration at Charlotte or give us a call here. Any of these methods on the screen if you want to update something on your camper profile. Another question was that we had something come up for Monday and Tuesday of week of one week we are enrolled in 
-hmm. Would it make the most sense to cancel the week because a child would miss so much? Would it, is it two days? Or, I think that might it's be a one-off case. I would say email youth programs and let's chat about that one offline. That seems like a specific, a specific instance. Okay, found the placard, having issues with printing and downloading it. Are you guys accessing the placard from the media center or from the app? I do recommend the media center if you haven't given that a try. Because I know the app may present some challenges for printing. Yeah, someone said I signed into the app with the same email I did through which I registered, but I can't see the camps in my events. So the camps will not appear in your events. That is just going to be, um, you know, spirit days, popsicle party, different events that youth programs is having. Your camps are going to appear when you tap more documents, and that is where the weeks and the camps are going to appear. So you are trying from the app. What is the media center? Don't you worry. Alyssa, you have the link for the media center. Thank you. Alyssa's going to drop that link in for you, and it's going to be the same login for the media center as it would be for the app. Does a student need to carry a laptop? No, they do not. We have access to computers if that is required for a project or for their learning. They do not need a laptop or tablet. I actually encourage you not to bring the laptop and the tablet. Speak more about high school academy, what their day will possibly look like. Yeah, so it's going to be pretty unique to the camp. Um, so they'll start off in that teen lounge. Again, they're typically playing games like Uno and, and just doing some team building in the teen lounge. Then they'll start off their day. The learning chunk is from nine until their lunchtime. Now, the Niner Academy, their lunch is going to be either in the dining hall or they get the special privilege to dine at Chick-fil-A, where the other kind of college students are, our other dining area. So they do get that unique privilege. Um, and the second half of the day, again, they're concluding their learning and that really is camp specific. So you'll learn more about that when those agendas become live two weeks prior to the camp. Um, and hopefully that gives you kind of a, a little bit better of an overview, but the agenda will really provide some insight for the specific camp that your child is in. So Alyssa has dropped in the media center um, link there. So it's mymediacenter.my1218app.com. And that is where you will log in and access your dash placard for printing. Now you will need to set up the app in advance. Um, so definitely start with our quick start guide. And Alyssa, would you mind dropping in the quick start guide one more time so folks know how to enroll for the app? Thank y'all. Bought a meal plan. Where will the kids eat? What is the process? So they'll be eating at Social 704. Um, if you're familiar with campus, historically, that was Crown Commons in the Student Union. And so lunch, there is a pizza bar. There is like a home style section, a salad bar, a dessert bar. So it's your standard kind of cafeteria dining hall. And our team is going to be there supervising, helping make sure they get what they need. Um, so they really kind of have a lot of different options with the meal plan, but it will be held in the dining hall. So for teenagers, they don't need a meal plan. So for, for Niner Academy, you can purchase a meal plan if you would like for them to get that dining hall experience. If you do, if you would prefer that they kind of pack their lunch, play it by ear, or they, you know, they just want to eat at Chick-fil-A every day. Listen, I don't blame them. I love Chick-fil-A. I would eat there every day too. Then you're more than welcome to send money for high schoolers. We just ask that you don't send money for our younger ones because we have our meal plans pre-planned out and pre-contracted with our dining hall. Yes, your husband can also access the app. So Whatever, whichever authorized adults are on your child's profile, those are the adults that will have access to the app. And um, let's say that you want Auntie to also have access to the app, just have her email us and we can add folks manually that aren't already, you know, uploaded into your camper profile. 
Um, so if you're, you know, if you have someone that wants to download the app and you're finding that they don't have the same access that you do, just email us. We're more than happy to add anybody manually to the camp app. Well, camp, oh yes, help the smaller ones make good choices. That is a great question. <laughs> So we definitely encourage having that conversation at home, but if, if you are, you know, someone that's like, please don't let my child eat like, you know, 10 scoops of ice cream, 10 cookies, things like that, then just, just let the counselors know when you're dropping off for the day and we'll make sure that that takes place. But we do do dessert at the end. We make sure that every child has, you know, real food, a real plate of food and that we are eating, you know, a dedicated lunch time and then we have a dedicated dessert time. So. We actually don't even let them go to the dessert bar until at the end of lunch once everyone's had a, you know, real food, if you will. So yes, good question, because you know they go straight for the ice cream. Righty, any other questions? The child profile. So your child's profile is in our registration system. So if there's something specific about the profile that you'd want to add, you would contact our registration team. But if you're just looking for your child's documents for the parent documents within the app, that is what the app is for. That is more for parent communication, agendas, placards, things like that. If there's something about your child that you want our team to know, that's handled on the registration side. We wouldn't put sensitive data about a child in our app. That would only be in our, you know, protected registration system. And again, if you would like to print that, I do recommend doing that from the media center. You will have to enroll and set up the app first. So you have login access, but once you have login access, you can take that login and use it on the My Media Center on a desktop to print your dash placard. So we would know that a child has allergies if you put that on their camper profile whenever you register them. So you might remember that um, medical safety application that you did at registration or before you were able to register. And so that's where parents would have documented any allergies. If you feel like you're not sure if you put it or if you want to add some, Again, contact our registration team at this number, or you can email us and we will make sure to get any allergies added. Yeah, authorized people, you would email registration. Yep, exactly. So you may be able to see it on your end when you log in as a parent. To be honest, um, our registration system has made some updates. So I, I can't remember off the top of my head, shame on me, if you can see it from the parent side. But if you're questioning it, I do recommend just calling us or emailing us and we'd be happy to check, check that for you. It will it'll take us no time to look that up. All right. Any other questions? Thank you so much. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. And if you didn't, just give me a call. I'll be happy to explain anything one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. No questions, must have been we got to them all. I hope that's the case. I really thank each of you for being here. We're super excited. The cafeteria is not nut-free because technically, you know, it's for the college students. So um, we avoid any products with nuts. And if you have a concern about that, you can actually look up the cafeteria menu online. Um, if you type in, let's see, Social 704 UNC Charlotte, they have the menus available online. Just give that a Google. And if there's ever something that comes across on the menu that you're like, oh, please just make sure my child doesn't get anywhere near that, then we got you. We're happy to do that. Okay. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. Thank you for being here.
How would we be notified of an opening on a wait list? You would receive an email should a seat become available. If you're wondering where you fall, what seat you fall on a wait list, like if you're number one, number 10, what have you, uh, give us an email and we can let you know what position you're in. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Is Niner Academy team seat separately? Thank you. Excellent presentation, y'all. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Our Niner Academy, they do eat separately from the younger ones. Again, trying to provide that authentic college experience for our Niner Academy since we know college is possibly in their near future. How do we get info on having our child do the CIT? Great question. They must be at least 14. Uh, we have already filled our CIT positions for this summer, but if you're interested in next summer, then you will find our CIT application on our website. Awesome. Yes, please. Especially if they've been a camper before, like Alyssa mentioned. Alyssa was a camper, a CIT counselor. Now she's lead counselor. So, and you know, she she's awesome. Our campers make great CITs and great counselors. So definitely check us out next summer if you're interested in that. You're welcome. Thanks, appreciate it. All right, folks, thanks for joining us. We are going to conclude the evening and looking forward to a great summer. Appreciate you. Bye.